Okay, let's get this started and let's get you uh, hopefully a more streamlined version for factoring and solving polynomial functions. Um, this is really just an introductory going with some of the things that are basic, not trying to say get into the more complex areas that we'll discuss later on. So just kind of keep that in mind. This hopefully will help streamline and ease some confusion that some of y'all have been uh, sharing with me. Okay, so let's keep in mind that if I have two terms, I'm going to look at some difference of two cubes. And again, I'm just sticking to a very specific pattern here. Three terms, we're going to look at quadratic form, and four terms, we're going to look at grouping. So, how do I look at sum and difference of two cubes? Okay, so with sum and difference of two cubes, I'm going to make sure that I remember that everything is in terms of something cubed plus something else cubed, or something cubed minus something else cubed, and there's a specific formula. And the main thing to get is, again, notice that if it's plus, I've got plus, minus, plus. Minus is minus, plus, plus. So notice how the parentheses get set up. Also, make sure you know your perfect cubes. Now, if you see something that says, like, let's say 343, then that means, like, if it had 343 here, that's 7 cubed. So the cube root of that would be 7, and I would put a 7 there. So let's hopefully, you know, kind of keep that in mind. So let's look at the first example. Okay, so for my first example, I've got x cubed plus 1,331. If you go back to that paper that you just had, or that uh, hopefully that which you just took on the cubes, you would recognize that 1,331 is 11 cubed. So we're going to start this off. First off, because this is a plus, I'm going to go plus, minus, plus. And then the cube root of any variable... If you just divide the exponent by 3, you should get the cube root of that. So like 3 divided by 3 is 1, so that means my cube root of x cubed is just x. And then the cube root of 1,331 was 11. Now you're going to take both those numbers and square them. x, when you square it, is x squared. 11 squared is 121. And then in the middle, you just got to multiply those two. 11 times x is 11x. And that's it. You're done. That's it factored. Nothing else. Simple, simple. All right, so let's look at the next one. Now I've got x cubed minus 1,000. Okay, so again, the cube root of x, well, I guess I could put the minus is minus plus plus, but the cube root of x is just x, and the cube root of 1,000 is 10. So now I'm going to square x squared. 10 squared is 100, and then 10 times x in the middle. Doom, doom, doom. Boop, boom, boom. There you go. All right. Let me throw one for a little bit of a curveball for you. Here's a slightly bigger one. How do I factor this? Well, <clears throat> again, first off, plus plus would be plus minus plus. I don't remember if I put that first, but let's go. Take the 6, the exponent, and divide it by 2, 3. So that would be x squared. Cube root of 125 is 5. Again, you have that in your, 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 your format, your thing, Bobby, your table. Wave A. Uh, and again, plus minus plus. Now I'm going to square x squared, which means x squared and x squared gives me x to the fourth. Remember, these two ends right here should add up to that one right there. Always keep that in mind. Uh, 5 squared is 25, and then 5 times 25 is, I'm sorry, 5 times x squared is 5x squared. And you're done. Ooh, technically that could maybe be done in quadratic form. Hmm, who knows? I don't think so, though. A and that's pretty much it. That's it for, say sum and difference of two cubes. So now let's look at quadratic form. Quadratic form, again, you got to remember the plus, 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 minus, plus, minus, minus, and, you know, which ones do you add? Oops, I almost forgot to put subtract. Again, if you're looking at, say, something like x, uh, and I'll put it here, like x to the fourth plus, let's say, eight, nah, some number here, x, let's say b, and some number here, c squared. This one always goes here, guys. This one, the one that's in front of the middle term, always goes down there. Keep that in mind, because some of y'all have been switching around, because you're like, oh, the biggest number always goes on top. No, not the biggest number always goes on top. It's just the number in the middle here goes in the bottom, and the number at the end goes on top. If there is a number here in front, then I could multiply, but I'm not going to do that to y'all. And do not forget that if you have x squared minus a number, you can split that up to be x plus and x minus the square root. But you're only going to worry about this if there is a square root. Okay? So let's look at an example. 
Okay, so I have x to the fourth plus 17, should say 17x squared plus 60. I don't know where I forgot my x squared, uh, but I'll put it up in a minute, I'm sure. Okay, so I'm going to split the x to the fourth to x squared x squared. Plus plus is plus plus. Okay, and now I'm going to look for two numbers that multiply to give me 60 and add up to 17. Seriously, when am I going to put up that square? Um, <clears throat> I'll put it up now, and then let's see what happens. You'll probably see it in a minute, and I'll have two twos kind of over each other. Okay, so what do I do? I start dividing factors of six, to find factors of 60. So like 60 divided by 1 is 60. 60 divided by 2 is 30. 60 divided by 3 is 20. None of these add up to 17, by the way. 60 divided by 4 is 15. 60 divided by 5 is 12. Oh, what is 5 plus 12? It is 17. So there you go. So then you're going to put the 12 and the 17 into the parentheses. And because they're pluses, you're done. It's just like finito. You're done. How about, let's look at the next example. Oh, x to the fourth minus 13x plus 36. Seriously, what is with me and not putting the square? Okay. So here I've got minus plus, which means I'm going to put minus minus. So be careful on this one because you might have to pay attention to see if those numbers are square roots. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 36 and add up to a negative 13. Okay, so, and you don't have to worry about signs because you've already got them taken care of right there on the sides. So 36 divided by 1 is 36. 36 divided by 2 is 18. 36 divided by 3 is 12. 36 divided by 4 is 9. 9 plus 13, I'm sorry, 9 plus 4 is 13, so there I go. So I got 9 and 4. Now look at those two numbers. Are there square roots for 9 and 4? Well, yeah, it's like 3 and 2. So then you could split that up further and say x plus, x minus. And then again, square root of 9 is 3, square root of 4 is 2, and you're done. If you left it like this, and then getting further, I mean, you got most credit, but, you know, if you can, go to that extra mile. Anyways, let's look at grouping. Okay, with grouping, I take the first two terms and I put them together, and the last two terms and put them together. Because they want to be together. Anyways, what can I take out of the first one? I can take out an x squared, and again, I'm keeping this simple because I want y'all to see the pattern. You got that would leave you with an x plus 6. Now in grouping, parentheses should always repeat. So that x plus 6 is going to repeat. So how do I find this number here? I could easily go, well, what's 12 divided by 6? Positive 2. So you put that together. And now you can write your repeater, x plus 6. And then put the 2 on the outside together, x squared and 2. And there you go. That's it. Whoops, went too far. There you go. Let's look at another example x cubed plus 4x squared minus 9x plus 36. Now, some of y'all have problems with this with the minus. Okay, so you, you put the things together and you go, okay, x squared is equal to x plus 4, and then you write x plus 4 again. And then you're like, oh, what do I put next? And some of y'all even wrote, for some reason, x minus 4. It's exactly the same. So now let's take negative 36 and divide it by 4. Negative 36 divided by 4 is negative 9. So then I can put the x squared minus 9 together and the x plus 4, my repeater, together. And then notice it's x squared minus 9. If you have squared and minus, you can split them up. So, you know, maybe sometimes you might have to pay attention for that extra little bit that you can do. And that's factored by grouping. So how does all this change when I set them equal to 0? Let's look. So now we're going to do solving. So I'm going to start off with grouping and then work my way backward to cubics again. Okay, when I'm solving, I'm just putting these together. I'm going through the same steps as factoring. So you can see me doing my steps, rewriting the, the repeater, 35 divided by 5 is 7, and now I'm going to set this equal to 0. So notice it would say equal to 0. So everything's set up, just like if I had just factored. Now I can say x plus 5 equals 0, and I can say x squared minus 7 equals 0. Solve for x by subtracting, or in this, yeah, both cases subtract. Now notice here on this one I've got an x squared. So I've got to take the square root, and every time I take the square root, I'm going to say positive and negative. That gives me two different answers. Because again, with x cubed, you should have three answers. Here's one. x plus and minus gives me the other two. Because there is a negative under the square root, I am going to put an i. There is no square root of 7, so I just leave it as square root of 7. So I have an answer of plus minus i squared of 7. Again, keep in mind, 
That one right here, you could not see on the calculator because it's an imaginary number, so it would not appear on the graph. So there's your three answers, x equals negative 5, positive i squared is 7, and negative i squared is 7. Almost there. I know this is getting a little long, but I wanted to cover all this information for you all. Here's a quadratic form. Minus plus is minus minus. And I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 12 and add up to 7, which would be 4 and 3. So I would put 4 and 3. And then, look, you don't even have to worry about splitting them up. I don't care if there's a plus, if there's a minus. You just set x minus 4, set them equal to 0, solve, move them to the other side by changing the sign, and then take the square root. And remember, when you take the square root, you're always going to put plus and minus. Now, in the first one, square root of 4 is 2. That comes out nice and even. But in the second one, there is no square root of 3, so I would just leave it plus minus square root of 3. So you have a positive 2, a negative 2, positive 3, and a negative 3. There's your four answers right there. And I was supposed to get four answers. Finally, let's look at grouping. Grouping is a little bit, I'm sorry, the sum and difference of two cubes. This one is the a little bit harder for the second part, but only if you pay attention to the fact, and you can see how I'm doing the normal factoring, that you've got to use the quadratic formula for the second parent, second parentheses. So notice how I'm using the quadratic formula. I'm going to use that whole negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. Okay. And I'm going to plug in the numbers where they go and then try to carry out what I need to do. On You can't really type all this into the calculator because every single time you will get an imaginary answer with these. So right now negative of negative 12 becomes positive 12. 12 squared is 144. Minus 4 times 1 times 144, which is 576. And I just popped to the end, but there you go. 144 minus 576 gives me this 432. Negative 432, so that's why I put an I, because I already knew it was going to be negative. Now, if you stopped right here and just gave me this answer, I would be okay with it. But if you notice, I can factor this, and it becomes 12I squared of 3. I think a lot of these, it became 12 plus, the like the number that B was, right? plus or minus b again i squared of 3, but you can double check me. This could have been further simplified, 12 divided by 2, 12 divided by 2 to give me the 6, 6. If you had done this, let's say bonus points, if need be. But if you got me to here, full credit. Anyways, um, hopefully that answers most of y'all's questions about this, but if you do have more, I would definitely ask them before you take your test. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you so much. Y'all take care. Goodbye.